give you all the glory Lord We give you all the praise Now let's give Jesus a big hand clap of praise Come on, I know it's early, but we can do better than that for the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. Peace be to the house of God today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. We're glad to be back home again, as we say, praise God. We honor the Lord in this place. We honor this great bishop and this great pastor. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the leaders here at Deliverance. And we don't take it lightly for the opportunity to be back amongst you again. You know, I believe this is, our, this is our fourth time here. Some I've known and some I've seen and some I have not, but this is our fourth time here. And we thank God for our beautiful wife, Apostle D. Davis. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for her. You know, we thank God. Um, praise God in our midst. We thank God for what he is doing in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God. You know, the last time we were here, uh, I was here. I know my wife's been here since then, but the last time I was here, I believe, was uh, last uh, February. And I'm hitting a dead spot. In, in February of 20- And, you know, during that time of that year, the Lord gave me four words. And some of you are here maybe remember those four words of, of last year. Elevation, inspiration, operation, and manifestation. That was elevation, inspiration, thank you, and operation and manifestation. And during that last year, the Lord has done just that. Praise God. Hallelujah. He has elevated us in the kingdom, and we are inspired to operate and function in our purpose, in our plan, in the kingdom of God. How many know all of us have a purpose? Um, all of us have a person. I oftentimes uh, challenge the people of God, especially the leaders of God, to write your mission statement. So what is your mission? What is your purpose? And as we identify with that, and, you know, as I was looking at the bulletin um, on the uh, uh, message for this year, uh, the bulletin, where it says, uh, your, your word for the, the theme is the kingdom. Kingdom what? So kingdom manifestation. So kingdom manifestation, manifestation means something made known unto you. Amen? So what in the kingdom is being made known unto you? There's many opportunities for many things to be made known unto us in the kingdom. Amen. So today, uh, praise God, and, and um, as the apostle was, was exhorting and preaching and teaching um, throughout the week about the kingdom, and I didn't know what the theme was, but we're going to flow uh, in that kingdom message. Is that all right? And so open your Bibles to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew chapter 6. <laughs> and as we talk a little bit about this kingdom, we're going to begin reading. Let's start at 24. Matthew 6. In 24. Amen. And it reads, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else 
He will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? My God. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, hmm. how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Take therefore no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these. Let me know the heavenly Father knows everything. And he knows what we have need of. But here's the golden text that I want to present to you this morning. But seek ye first, what? The kingdom. Go to 33 up there. My, my pad is going in and out. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness and all what? These things will be added unto you. So what we're talking about this morning is seeking the kingdom. But understanding we have to have our priorities in the right perspective to seek the kingdom. But the Bible said seek the kingdom what? First. Somebody say first. Seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. So in other words, we know God owns everything. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All they that dwell therein, everything belongs to God. And so we as citizens or we as believers of God, it should be our desire and our purpose to seek first the kingdom. If we want the kingdom to be manifested, if you want the kingdom to be made known unto us, we must do what? Seek the kingdom. Amen. So one thing that we want to all understand um, is three keys to seeking the kingdom. Number one, we have to prioritize. Number two, we have to organize. And number three, we have to discipline ourselves. Three keys to seeking the kingdom, right? We have to prioritize. I don't know about you, but I make my own schedule. And I prioritize my own schedule. So we as people of God have to be determined in our lives, in our heart, in our spirit to do what? Seek first the kingdom of God. Ultimately, it's just first things first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us. So we have to organize first things first. What are your priorities? All of us have different priorities. All of us have different things that we have going on in our lives, but we have to organize. After we prioritize, we have to organize what goes first. But the God we serve, my God, he's lifted up high. Hallelujah. And he is great and greatly to be praised. But I don't know about you, but as an inspiration in my spirit to seek first the kingdom of God. It's an inspiration in my spirit to give God the glory. It's an inspiration in my spirit to give God the praise because I want to experience the manifested power of the kingdom. 
Can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So after we prioritize and organize, you know, one thing that is most challenging for everybody is discipline. It doesn't matter who we are. We have to discipline ourselves and to do what we need to do for the kingdom. Doesn't matter. Somebody say discipline. So discipline is something that is self-imposed. Not what somebody else puts on you, but discipline is self-imposed. So we have to discipline ourselves to seek the kingdom first. Praise God. We have to discipline ourselves to do what? Seek the face of God. We have to discipline ourselves to pray. We have to discipline ourselves to praise. We have to discipline ourselves to worship. And when we get uh, to practice the, the spiritual disciplines, if you will, hallelujah, if we prioritize, hallelujah, I believe if we prioritize, one thing about it, uh, uh, when you begin to praise God, when you begin to worship God, uh, the spirit of God shows up. How many know that? Huh? Through praise and worship, the manifested glory of God will show up. And when the glory of God shows up, something has to change in the atmosphere. When the glory of God shows up, you change in the atmosphere. When the glory of God shows up, your thought process change. Uh, your desires change. Hallelujah. Your intentions change when the glory of God shows up. Amen. How many desire the glory of God? Hallelujah. But see, simply, you know, we've been talking about seeking this kingdom. But understand, we got priorities in the kingdom. And he said, well, what is this kingdom? We talk about this kingdom. Well, they've been talking about this kingdom. But on the natural, we understand every kingdom has what? Has a king. Amen. I'm talking about King Jesus, if you don't know him. Every kingdom has a king, and the king has a domain and has a what? A territory. Hallelujah. And every kingdom has citizens. Any citizens in here? Any citizens in here? Now, understand the citizenship now. You know, when we came over here, uh, Bishop always said these are Kenyans, and we live over there, praise God. But one thing about it, we don't have Kenyan citizenship. I don't have king. I have U.S. citizenship. Does anybody here have U.S. citizenship? I don't have uh, uh, Kenyan citizenship. But I'm a citizen in the kingdom of God Almighty. Amen. I'm a citizen of the king. And the desire of the citizens of the king is to worship the king in the beauty of holiness. How many got a desire as citizens of the kingdom of God to worship him in the beauty of holiness? Because I want to see the manifested glory of God. I want to uh, the manifested power of God to just overflow on me, to just overflow that there be an outpouring of the spirit of God because I seek first, my God, the kingdom and his righteousness. And we know that everything else will be added. The writer said, don't worry about your clothes. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about that. Just worry about seeking my faith because I am your provider. Everything we need, God has it. Everything we need, Jesus already knows what we need. Amen. But we understand that, as I said, the kingdom has a territory or the king's domain, if you will. And the king is not only king, he is Lord. That means he owns everything. Don't you know as a citizen, you don't own yourself no more? God owns you. Well, wait a minute. In the U.S., there's certain things because we are U.S. citizens that they tell us we got to do. Amen. Pay taxes is one of them. Huh? Because we are citizens, we got to pay the government what's due unto the government. So guess what? As citizens in the kingdom of God, you got to give God what's due unto him. Well, what's due unto him is praise. Hallelujah. The praise don't even belong to you. It belongs to God. Somehow they say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I'm praising. Praise the, oh, then the praise team, you all. So I commend you all. And the musicians, I commend you all. The way you all praise and worship God with one accord. With one accord. The flow of the spirit. 
but the praise is highly. Something happens when praises go up. I don't know about you, but I need a blessing from God. How many need a blessing from God? Well, the Bible said when praises go up, the blessings of the Lord come down. Why don't you just take a praise break and begin to give God a hand clap of praise? Why don't you shout hallelujah? Why don't you say thank you, Jesus? Why don't you say, God, you are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. I'm seeking you first because you are God almighty. You are my everything. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about food. I'm not worried about clothes. All I am is a citizen of yours and worry about seeking your face. My God, I want to see your glory. I want to experience your glory. I want to be changed from the inside out because of your glory. My God, hallelujah. We talk about this kingdom. Guess what? Every kingdom has a royal covenant. In other words, it has a constitution. How many of you know? How do you citizens, we have a constitution. You got it right there. How do you, and we have to know the constitution to be the best citizens we can be. I'm talking about the Bible. That's our constitution. That's our guidelines. That's our roadmap. We have to know the constitution. We have to know the word of God. If we want to experience the manifestation of God, we have to know what the Constitution said that we can be citizens that please God. Hallelujah. Every citizen, hallelujah, in the world, in the country is not pleasing God. But as citizens in the kingdom, we should have that earnest desire to please God like never before. It should be in our heart. It should be in our spirit. We're just thinking about how do we please God? How do I adhere to the word of God? How do I hear the voice of God? How do I obey, my God, the voice and the word of God? Hmm. I believe it was James said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. But understanding as citizens in the kingdom, our ultimate goal is to be subject to the king. That's the ultimate goal, is to please God Almighty. You know, I don't know about you, but in the United States, there's a lot of what we call people pleasers. Anybody know any people pleasers? Huh? Y'all don't know any? Well, they're here. You may not know them, but they're here. But I challenge me, let's please God. Huh? Let's please God. Let us have it. Seek God and do what? Please, God, let us be the best citizen. Let us be the best saint of God that we can be. In other words, fulfill your purpose. Hmm. Apostle was talking about the body. The body is one and one has many members. But as members of the body, we have to identify what is our purpose. Why is that so important? Pastor, because whatever your purpose is that God gives to you in the minute, that's your purpose. Nobody can fulfill your purpose but you. Nobody can do you but you. Hallelujah. Nobody can do me but me. But I want to be the best me in God as I can possibly be. Whatever God has graced you with, the grace and the mercy, whatever the grace gifts are in the body of Christ, because the body is one, because it's incomplete without you, without you, without you, the body's incomplete. My God, hallelujah. Now, sister, they sing, and I know some soprano, some alto, but whatever, pray to God, wherever you sing, that's her note. My God, that note only belongs to her. Because God birthed that in her. God is birthing some things in us. God is birthing some things in us. I'm glad about the birthing because with the birthing comes the manifestation. It becomes to be made known who you are, what you are, what you have inside of you to use for him to be glorified. Let me move on. Oh, my God. One thing about it, as citizens, how many know we got privileges and benefits? (laughs) How many like the benefits? I like the benefits of being a citizen in the kingdom. The benefits, my God, one benefit, we don't take this lightly. God has sought, my God, found us worthy to carry his word. My God. Oh, what a benefit to be able to teach his word, to be able to uh, preach his word, to uh, live his word, and to express his word. Oh, what a benefit. 
oftentimes on jobs, praise God, I know, uh, and sometimes on job, it's not so much, praise God, what you make, but it's the benefits. So many benefits in the kingdom. How many know eternal life is a benefit in the kingdom? I don't know why you're over here, but I'm over here for eternal life. I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done. You have served me. How do you have humbled yourself before my mighty hand? You have praised me. You have worshiped me in the beauty of holiness. Well done. Let me move. Let me move. One more thing we need to understand. Hallelujah. As citizens in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You know, in the United States, we have some states that are called commonwealth states. Commonwealth states. So that means we have economic security. Hallelujah. Don't you know, hallelujah, that each citizen in the kingdom has equal access unto God Almighty. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Equal access. So in other words, the Bible indicates, hallelujah, that veil in the old has been torn from top to bottom when Jesus got up out of that ground. And now we don't have to go before no high priest. We can go straight to God Almighty because the veil has been torn. We can get into the presence of God. We can get into the place of God. We can get into the throne room. My God, have that throne room experience because that veil has been torn top to bottom. So, in other words, we have security. We have equal access. There's one thing about access. We'll talk about it as we go. Praise God. Perhaps we'll get to it throughout this morning. But one thing about access. You know, you can have the nicest car or the nicest home, but if you don't have access to it, it don't mean a thing. If you don't have the key to that car, it doesn't mean a thing. If you can't have interest to get into that home, it doesn't mean a thing. So the important thing is, how did, because he got up out of that ground, we got access to the place of God. Because he rose, because of his resurrection, we have the ability to get into the presence of God. How many know God is everywhere? Hallelujah. How many know the presence of the Lord is here? How many know the power of the Lord is here? How many know the praise of the Lord is here? How many know the glory of the Lord is here? The righteousness of God is where? Right here, right now. In the temple, my God. Uh, let me move on. One thing, as we talk about this kingdom. Now, we've been talking about kingdom uh, uh, many times over the past year. We've been talking about this kingdom and uh, for the kingdom of God or the kingdom to be manifested, we have to have a change of mindset. Somebody say change of mindset. So in other words, that mindset of religion has to go. Religion, something that we do just over and over and over again, just religiously. It's time for the body of Christ, praise God, to do the things that are spiritual, that please God. The spiritual things of God, hallelujah, not just religious things. So one thing about changing our mindset, we have to understand, hallelujah, that religion is what a man does until he finds the kingdom. Hmm. Once you find the kingdom, you forget all that religious things that we used to do. Hallelujah. Don't you know that? One thing about religion, what it does, it prepares man to leave earth. But kingdom empowers man to dominate earth. Hallelujah. We're talking about dominate, be fruitful and multiply, take dominion. You were created to take dominion. So kingdom prepares man to die. I wish I had some people today that want to dominate here in the earth because of the kingdom of God. Time for the saints of God to dominate. Uh, hallelujah. We're going to talk about this more. It's a war going on, but we have to take our rightful place and dominate. Don't you know, praise God, we have to take authority because the king has given us authority through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have to use what you got. My God. Tell your neighbor, use what you got. Use what you got. Huh? Well, what do you have? Uh, my God, he said, after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Ye shall have what? Well, you need to say it like you got some power. Ye shall have power. My God, we got power. 
the Holy Ghost gives you power. My God, power to bind and loose. That power, hallelujah, comes with the keys. He said, I shall give you the keys to the kingdom, praise God. And whatsoever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is already loose in heaven. Because I gave you the keys. I gave you the authority through the power of the Holy Ghost. You ought to find your keys. That's what the problem is. Perhaps we done lost our keys. Oh, my God. Maybe I'll put it like this. You done lost your cell phone. See, when people lose that cell phone, my God, where my cell phone, they go crazy. They can't walk out because of that cell phone. But I want you to know, we got to get the things that are going to elevate us in the kingdom of God. I'm looking for the spirit of God. I'm looking for the anointing of God. I'm seeking the face of God like never before. Because we got power. Somebody say power. See, we have to identify, that's what I said, write your mission statement so you know who you are. Take a look at yourself so you know who you are in the, my God, in the spirit realm. We got to know who we are in the unseen realm. I see what you got on, but that's not what I'm looking at. My God, that's not what God looking at. He looking at that spirit of him vibrant in you. He wants to see himself in you. Stand up, Holy Ghost. Stand up in the people of God. Stand up so we can be, my God, stand and be identified. Stand up. Be accounted for because of the King of King and the Lord of Lord. What does religion do? Hallelujah. Religion focuses on heaven, but kingdom focuses on earth. Thy kingdom, that's what your theme is. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? Huh? Not in it, right, my God, but as it is in heaven, where I want the will of God to be done on earth, in earth, in, my God, you come from the dust in this earth. I want the will of God to be done in this earth. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I want the will of God to be done in this earth. Thy kingdom come. Manifest your glory. Thy kingdom come. Manifest your power. Thy kingdom come. Manifest your spirit. Thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me go. Religion is reaching up to God. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is coming down to man. Ah, no more reaching up. The kingdom of God is coming down. That kingdom of God, my God, when it comes down and the glory begins to fill the room. Ah, with our hands lifted up and our heart filled with praise, I will bless thee, O Lord. One thing about religion, it wants to escape earth the kingdom guess what it does it impacts it influences and it changes the earth the kingdom you make an impact influence my god it changes the earth well, what, the impact well why does it make an impact so much because of the glory of the lord Glory just means weight because of the weight, because the imprint of the glory of the Lord, we change, we influence, and we dominate in the earth. Hallelujah. King, my God, religion seeks to take the earth to heaven, but kingdom seeks to bring heaven to earth. That's what we say, seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Huh. And his righteousness. Let's look at this. Put up there for me Romans 14 and 17. Let me get that. Romans 14 and 17. Look at here. Oftentimes, the writers in the scripture, they describe what something is by telling what it is not. Paul does that in the love chapter. He talks about what love is not here. The writer said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. You got to take this in the right context, right? Who's speaking? Who's he speaking to? Dispensation that he's talking to. But here in Romans, talking to the Romans, 
You know, there was dissension between the Romans and the Jews. The Jews how they didn't, didn't understand the Romans being saved and all that. That's a whole other teaching. But the writer said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what is it? Righteousness. What is the righteousness of God? The righteousness of God is what the kingdom is. What is that? Huh? Well, because of what Christ did on the cross, he came, he shed his blood, he died, and he rose on the third day, praise God. Hallelujah. He was that one-time ultimate sacrifice that died and gave us the ability to be right with God the Father. Hallelujah. So we have made, been made right with God the Father through what Jesus did on the cross. The righteousness of God. In other words, you didn't have nothing to do with being right. It was the righteousness of God to give us the ability, the righteousness of Jesus to give us the ability to be right with God. Hallelujah. In other words, our sins, what, what did he do? He came to take away the sin of the world. He came, he died, and he rose to take away the sin of the world. The Bible says, uh, 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 not by righteousness let any man should boast, uh, but by what? Grace ye are saved. It's a gift of God. Jesus came to take away the sin of the world. It was a gift of God by the grace of God. Righteousness. This is what we ought to seek. The righteousness of God, to be right with God, to do right by God, to understand what the righteousness of God is, what the truth of God is, the righteousness of God. Peace, my God. This peace no man can give to you. Hallelujah. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. See, the peace that surpasses all understanding only comes from God Almighty. Hallelujah. Peace in the midst of the storm. We serve a God that can speak to the storms of life and say what? Peace, my God. Peace be still. I wish I knew if some people were going through a storm and they identified through the power of God in them that they could speak to the storms of life and say peace be still because I'm dominating because I'm a king child my God and I am the elect of God and I have authority to dominate in the kingdom anybody ever been through a storm hallelujah some people going through storms right now hallelujah but the storm is passing over hallelujah the storm is passing over hallelujah the storm is passing over hallelujah but speak to that storm and say peace be still can you say that with me Peace, oh no, no. Say peace, peace. be peace. still. Well, wait a minute, when you're dominating something, when you're commanding something, you have to speak with authority like you're telling it to get in its rightful place. Peace, be still. Hallelujah. My, don't, well, I think we got it all wrong. Now listen, Jesus, oh my God. Jesus, oh Christ is love. Yeah, but I don't. I don't believe Then he went and turned over those tables that he was talking, oh, excuse me, may I turn that table over? I don't believe that. I believe he went in the authority and the power of Jesus Christ as Lord, saying you're making my house a den of thieves. My God, hallelujah, people of God, we got to take authority in the kingdom right now, hallelujah, because we have to identify who we are. We've been called to dominate dominate the earth because of who he is let me get out of here my time's moving how do you one thing about it oh my god let me give you these let's go to uh my god luke 17 and 21 put that up there 17 and 21 seek ye first see we seeking in the wrong places for the wrong thing but if we're seeking the things of God, we got to know where the things of God are. Neither shall they say, lo here, no lo there. For behold, look where the kingdom of God is. <laughs> if you come back, we're going to elaborate on it. The kingdom of God is where? Where? Y'all believe that? Well, wait a minute. We talk about the benefits. 
if he is our Lord, if he owns us, hallelujah, if he's our God, he's our savior, he's our daddy, he's our everything, the benefits, we're an heir to the throne. And he, my God, so there'll be a continuum. He has placed, my God, his spirit in us. It is within you, so you have to exercise that which he placed in you. People, you have so much word in you. you <laughs> I don't think we recognize how much of the word of God that we have in us. Hallelujah. I don't know if we recognize how much of the spirit of God, the power of the spirit of God that is in us. But understand, the message is today, what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek him when? Now, perhaps over our lives, we put some things ahead of God. But the Bible says, seek ye what? First. First. The kingdom and its righteousness. Don't worry about nothing else. If we discipline ourselves, mother, to do that, to seek first the kingdom. Seek first. Everything will be added under. But the kingdom of God is in you. Use the authority, what we were created to do. We'll talk about that. Dominate. Take dominion. Be fruitful and multiply. So in other words, if we're fruitful and multiply, we will be fruitful and multiply after our own kind, after his own kind. So it will be a reciprocal effect. And the kingdom... And the church, the church and the kingdom are different. The church will look more like the kingdom as the kingdom looks more like God. Hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God as our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Be determined, people of God, in your mind, heart, body and soul everything you have be determined now moving forward if you haven't already seek ye first the kingdom of God seek ye first the kingdom of God we'll see the manifested glory of God if our focus is totally on God we want to be the best citizen in the kingdom the best saint in the church, the best saint in the body. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you today, O oh God, for your word. And Father, we know that your word has gone out and accomplished that in which it was sent. It cannot return void. But Father, we bless you for your word. And we're inspired in our spirit, O oh God, to seek ye first the kingdom, O oh God. To seek your righteousness, to seek your peace, O oh God. And the love of God shall abound in us. Therefore, we give you glory as we search forward. We give you honor and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody that loved the Lord, say amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise on this morning. We give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all